Hi, welcome to my corner. My name is Dale. You may also know me as Gabe. It's been a while since I added actual commentary to my videos, and I felt like doing one again. Today, I will be explaining how I go about my comic process. In the background, you will be able to see one of the pages I'm working on. At the end of my explanation, I will be recommending some comics I enjoy that perhaps you might as well. Before I start, I should add that I am in no way a professional. I'm just one guy who really, really loves comics and wants to make them himself. I'm hoping that sharing my experience can help other beginner comic artists figure out what works for them. Or doesn't, my method is just one of many. And speaking of methods... When I'm making a comic, big or small, I start off with a general idea of what it will be. It can be a scene I want to draw out, a piece of dialogue, or whatever. If the idea sticks in my mind long enough, I start scripting. To me, this is what keeps it all together, the keystone holding my comic together. The script will be what I refer back to, because I'm forgetful. This is what mine looks like. I have the dialogue bolded, and actions, and notes, and brackets. This keeps it nice and organized. Sometimes, if I've done the thumbnails, I separate the script into pages. Now, this isn't static. When I've moved on to the thumbnails or further into the process, I find something doesn't fit, or I've thought of a better way to do it. I try not to shift things around too much this late into the process, because it becomes a mess. Before moving on to thumbnails, I should mention that between ideas, writing, and actually drawing it, I like to wait. Giving my mind a break and coming back lets me see it with new eyes and catch mistakes, grammar, and plot holes. Here's an example of thumbnails I've done. They are there to get the idea down on paper and out of my brain. I only focus on where the figures should be placed, where they will go, how much space is given to speech bubbles, the mood of the page, and the flow throughout. This will act as my rough draft before I really get into it. And of course, I may change scenes here and there depending on what I feel is right. Now on to the big one. The way I do it after I'm happy with thumbnails is to start cleaning up the sketch. It can take one pass if I see the image clearly in my mind maybe two or three if I'm having a hard time drawing that day. Sketching takes the longest because I'm placing down notes on where shadows and details should go. It's crucial that I spend the most time here so I don't go in later and have to fix it. Finally, I ink it, color it in, and add in the overlays and details. I try to mimic how most professionals do theirs by dividing my dialogue by thicker middle and tapering at the top and bottom. If the conversation's tone has changed, or if there's a break in the dialogue, I put it into another bubble, so the reader isn't hit with a board salad. That's just my preference. I like to make my comics more image-heavy than word-heavy. And that is how I make my comics. Rinse and repeat. A lot of my methods for drawing in general and comics are frankenstein out of observation. When I pick up a comic nowadays, I not only read it, but observe it. What makes this panel so important? Did I realize that the scene transitioned, and how did they do that? Did I pick up on the background character? Will they come back? What makes this dialogue so important? The sequence of panels is new to me. I should keep note of that format. I know I should turn my brain off and enjoy it, but observing these details helps me in my work. Plus, I find it fun, like putting together a puzzle. Now on to the recommendations. I have three with a bonus thrown in. Step by Bloody Step is unique that it uses no dialogue. It's about a little girl who is protected by a gigantic knight. We follow her throughout her life and the many trials and joys it comes with it. It's in this beautiful sci-fi fantasy world with amazing artwork by Matthias Bagara. The world feels rich with a lot of emotion and power in the characters themselves even though they don't say a word. Stage Dreams is a short, fun, wild west story about two queer women trying to find a life in the Midwest. It's set during the Civil War and talks about roles, identity, and community. It's sweet, 
funny and dramatic, the art is done in these beautiful pastel shades and pencils. Junkyard Joe is an interesting story about a veteran, with the main character being a cartoonist himself and using his art to deal with the said traumas. Its other protagonist is Junkyard Joe, a robot from the Vietnam War that has reappeared years later. It's a fun and thrilling adventure with a good sized cast of characters. And now for my bonus recommendation, Making Comics by Scott McCloud. I remember picking up this book at my school's library and it inspired me to actually pursue comics as an art form, because for the longest time I viewed comics as something either for kids, collectors, or only something that professional storytellers could do. It's a medium, like animation, that can be used for anything, any kind of story. I highly recommend reading this if you also make comics yourself. That's it for today. Thank you for taking the time out of your day to visit my corner.